If any game in the world epitomises inclusivity and diversity, it could possibly be wheelchair rugby league, arguably the most inclusive game in the world. And we are extremely proud at the Leeds Rhinos to have one of the best teams in the country. And I'm even more pleased to be joined by wheelchair rugby league head coach, James Simpson, NBE, former player, World Cup winner, and on the back of winning the World Cup, there's been a massive rise in interest for wheelchair rugby league, so much so that we've got a big development team as well, James. Tell me a little bit about that development team. It's quite an introduction, that, isn't it? Yeah. It's not um, bad, is it? No, I know, yeah. Um, yeah, last year at the Rhinos, we had up to 10 players in the team. Yeah. And now we're, we're pushing over 30. Uh, and every week, every Wednesday night, we have over 30 players spread over an under-16s team, uh, a community development team, and the first team. Um, all in the same place training, but the interest has been absolutely huge and we're constantly getting people registered to play now. Uh, and because it's a development team, we can play as many of them as we want. So when we're playing friendlies against other teams, we're sometimes turning up where 15, 16 players. So actually getting everyone on the pitch to have good game time has become quite a quite a mammoth task to get everyone out there. But yeah, the interest has been amazing and, and we've got 30 odd players now in wheelchairs playing. We've got players who are under 16, we've got male players, female players, we've got players who are disabled, players who aren't disabled, who are playing with their best friend who happens to be disabled. So yeah, the the, the door of Wheelchair Rugby League and Leeds has absolutely opened up and, and it, it's, it's amazing and it's huge and we're welcoming more and more people every week. You mentioned Leeds there, I love the old term loiners. I grew up a loiner. What does it mean for people to come and play in a wheelchair, be a part of a group and represent Leeds? I think with the development team, when the new players come in and they've got players who they've seen on TV, players yeah. who they've seen on um, playing the World Cup, playing in big games. I think they realise how much it means to wear the badge. So they're seeing these players who've been playing a long time, walking around, being really proud to wear the shirt and, and, and having the chins up. And then when these new players are coming in, that's rubbing off on them. And we've got players who are coming in who might not have been Leeds fans or, or might not know rugby league, but they're getting in wheelchairs and they're getting that Rhino shirt on and you can see it in them straight away how they appreciate and they get what it's like to play for such a big city like Leeds and, and like to have that heritage behind you of everything that's happened. It means a lot to us as the senior players, and, and but the development team, it's starting to rub off on them as well. And you can really see it and when they're out there playing, they're giving it everything and they're giving it everything because of the badge and the players who worn it before them. Just tell us a little bit about what Will Terrell believes given you in your life, you know, a life-changing moment in the military there and redefined your life there as first a player and then a coach and an ambassador, an international ambassador of wheelchair rugby league. How's it changed your life, James? I can't really do it justice, what the game's done for me. Um, I was a soldier for 10 years and then when I left, I, just, you know, I didn't really know what I wanted to do and I just kind of waited and tried a few different things, but wheelchair rugby league found me at the right time when I was looking for something to get into and I was looking for a sport. And initially I just started playing to get out of the house and, and to be around other people who were disabled and, and learn what it was like to be in my early twenties, suddenly living with a disability. And, and I just did it for a bit of fun and to get in shape. And then over the course of 10 years, it, it gradually increased to where suddenly I was getting an opportunity to represent my country. And I was playing on the world stage wearing an England badge, you know, and then I was going to Australia to play rugby, to France, France to play rugby then culminating in a huge World Cup last year, record-breaking crowds, record-breaking viewing on TV and, and, and winning it as well, you know, yeah. in front of a home crowd. Like, it's <laughs> it's still quite strange saying that, but uh, the game, for me, wheelchair belief for me, was just to get out of the house and have a bit of fun. And it's led me to a place where I'm so passionate about the game and it gave me such a reason to carry on doing what I was doing and to push myself and to, and to stay in shape. And, and now I'm seeing that in younger players. I'm seeing players getting into the game now who might be disabled, who are a bit shy and... and don't really know what the world's about and they're starting to come out of the shell when they've got a, when they're in the chair and they've got a ball in the hand and you can see them talking and shouting and moving and and I can see them starting the journey I went on and it's happening now at the club with the new players coming in. Brilliant. James Simpson, MBE. Tom Halliwell's been awarded an OBE as well. It wasn't always about success. Obviously, three Challenge Cups in a row. You've won a couple of Super League Grand Finals as well, but you started off in a bit of adversity and it built resilience that well, ultimately paid dividends in the end. Just tell us really quickly about the journey. Yeah, like you mentioned the, the MBE and the OBEs there, and I think it's hard in a team sport because you share yeah. accolades. So when you get singled out for something, it, it can be very strange and you're like, oh, I don't, I need to figure a way of not making this about me and giving it to the team. <laughs> like everyone deserves it, but it, it's, it's a hard thing. And then you kind of realise that you've done something that has had an impact on the game or has helped out. And, and 
And I feel like all that stems from sticking with the game in those early days. Do you know, like for the first two years of me playing the game, I'm Tom playing the game and, and Nathan and Josh, we lost every game we played, every game, sometimes 120 nil, 126 or something silly like that. I remember our first draw and it was like, we just like won the World Cup Challenge. It was amazing. And we stuck together though, did the team and all those players who went through that period are still part of the Rhinos club now. And four of them have gone on to play for England. One of them, or well, five of them have gone on to play for England. We've got another player who's just come into the England set up now. So the pathway there is like dealing with that adversity early on and taking those knocks and just coming back every week for each other and for the leads and for the badge and, and coming back and just giving it everything has led us to making our first final, winning our first final, winning our first two finals on the bounce. And it's all started with us just getting together and being a team that has grown into the team we are now. This guy's amazing. Keeps me motivated. Every <laughs> time I see him inspiring, 14th of July, inclusive it around, come and see James Simpson and the rest of the team. Hope to see you there.